Hello, I'm Dr. Chad Price, the founder of the Institute for Better Bone Health and a professor of orthopedic surgery at the University of Central Florida College of Medicine. Over my career, I've had the opportunity to publish over 70 peer-reviewed journals and scientific papers. Many of these have been on the subject of bone healing and bone formation. But my interest in the aspects of the aging bone came to the front in December of 2008 when my mother sustained a hip fracture. And this was after a series of fractures that led to a downward spiral of osteoporosis and eventually led to her demise as a complication of her hip fracture. She was a registered dietitian so I grew up with a, a dose of nutrition and an awareness of the importance of nutrition but that together stimulated me on this quest. In 2004, the Surgeon General's report on bone health and osteoporosis reported some alarming statistics that one in six women will have a hip fracture after the age of 50. 20 percent of those women will be institutionalized in a long-term care facility and there's a 25 percent mortality in the year following a hip fracture. That last statistic has not improved in 40 years in spite of the advancements in health care, so we need to do something different. The National Osteoporosis Foundation has said, quote, we have known for a long time that calcium and vitamin D are critical but are not enough alone to prevent fractures. And that's been the focus of the Institute for Better Bone Health, that they are not enough alone. In fact, bone health depends on the nutrients that form bone and the minerals that are in bone. Calcium and vitamin D are important, but they aren't the only nutrients that form bone. Silicon, vitamin K, inositol, boron, magnesium, arginine, and vitamin C, these are all nutrients that are essential for bone building and they're often insufficient in the typical American diet. Silicon, for example, is 25 times more concentrated in bone forming protein than in mature bone. This means that silicon helps the bone calcify and then it leaves the bone. And excess silicon does not build up in the body. So there's no harmful effect from the silicon because it acts somewhat like a catalyst to make the bone calcify and then it leaves. So you won't find it in dead bone like bone meal or coral or oyster shells. It's done its job and it's very important for bone formation and bone maintenance. Another example is vitamin K. Vitamin K activates a bone forming protein that's produced by vitamin D. Vitamin K and vitamin D together increase mineralization more than either alone and more than half the population of the United States is insufficient in vitamin K. So how much calcium do you need in addition to dietary sources? The Harvard Health Beat says that 500 milligrams per day in a supplement may be optimal. And the various forms of calcium are equally absorbed with meals. This is because bone health and calcium absorption and utilization depend on the balance of other nutrients. All of these things influence the absorption and utilization of calcium, vitamin D, silicon, vitamin K, boron, inositol, and vitamin C. And that's why we have focused on these at the Institute for Better Bone Health. An article has been published titled Essential Nutrients for Bone Health and a Review of Their Availability in the Average North American Diet. You can access this on the section for physicians in our website. I hope you will learn more about your own bone health and take charge of your bone health by taking in all of the nutrients that you need. Thank you very much.